Today, we're going to talk about why it is important to raise and elevate Asian women's voices with Sheena Yap Chan. Stay tuned. It is Unsermon with Kat Kim. All right. Hello, everyone. For those of you guys that are new to me, my name is Kat Kim. I am a spiritual mentor and confidence coach. I'm the person that's going to help you overcome your fears, blocks, and shame so that you can step into the best version of yourself and truly make a difference. For those of you that are here live, let me know who's here in the comment box. Give me um, a comment. Say hello. I am so excited. This is Unsermon episode 16, I think. I, I'm losing track. Um, it is episode 16. And Unsermon is basically um, where we take a metaphysical exploration of God and spirituality, social justice issues, where we together decondition, decolonize, we undo, dismantle, we unsermon. And this has been an incredible journey so far. If you guys haven't listened to the previous episodes, go back and listen because it's a little bit episodic and you will see how even myself, even as a host of this show, I am continually decolonizing my own mindset. And it's been an amazing journey. For those of you that are just joining us, we are talking about why it is important to elevate Asian women's voices with Sheena Yap Chan. Before I bring her on, I'm just going to read what she's been up to because it's been so amazing, okay? Sheena Yap Chan is a keynote speaker, coach, podcaster, consultant, and author of several books actually now. She currently inspires women through her award-winning podcast called The Tao of Self-Confidence check out episode number 805. That's what that's what I'm on. <laughs> Where she interviews Asian women about their inner journey to self-confidence. Sheena has been featured on Mind Valley. She's been featured in Marketing in Asia, Manila Times, and more. Um, she is also the top 100 Filipinos to follow on LinkedIn for inspiration and learning in 2020. And you've just got some really cool, amazing projects coming on, which I'm going to let you um, share with us. Welcome, Sheena. Hey, Kat. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, for anyone who has hasn't listened to Kat's episode on my podcast, it's definitely a must listen because she has such an amazing story. And, you know, the fact that she was able to overcome so many things to where she is today is definitely something that needs to be on a K-drama. So... <laughs> That's all I have to say yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. A side note, you guys, um, we are both obsessed about Korean dramas. <laughs> I don't know if I know anyone else who matches my level of obsession. It's like I don't and I don't say a lot about it because it's like over the top obsession. But I think you go beyond me, actually, Sheena. I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I think I do. <laughs> yeah, you know Korean actors' names. You know, like, their background. You know their history. You're into K-pop, too, right? I love K-pop. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten into K-pop yet, but just watch. Though, I have to say, because I watch um, Korean talk shows now, um, all the, the K-pop stars come on. And I just, like, I just adore their personalities. And I'm starting to just love them, even though I haven't listened to their music yet. But anyway, <laughs> that's a little side thing. But Sheena, I want to know, like, okay, your, your Tao of Self-Confidence podcast, how many episodes have you done so far? I think I've done 828 episodes. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's I, was that, like I was a crazy Asian who decided to, like, interview a bunch of Asian women, too. <laughs> Really create representation. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So do you do it daily? Is it a daily podcast? Oh, no, no. Oh. So so when I first started, I actually didn't even, the focus wasn't even about highlighting Asian women. It was just really to create a podcast empowering all women. And as I was doing it, my, my passion was really to elevate Asian women's voices because growing up in Canada, I never saw anybody that looked like me. And so a part of that, I was always ashamed of being Asian. I thought I had to be a blonde hair, blue eyed girl to right. be considered as beautiful. And so I didn't yeah. want current and future generations to go through what I went through, right? Yeah. I didn't want 12 year, old, 12 year old me to go through that again. Wow. And so that's why I created the podcast. And I said, you know, I always tell people, if you really crave for that representation, it has to start with yourself, even if you have no clue what you're doing. And half mm -hmm. the time, I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't even know what a podcast was. I just, yeah. you know, 
I just saw this thing on Apple, right? I'm like, a podcast? What is that? Like, I just kept seeing it on Apple and then actually invested in a course to learn more about and to uh, have a community of seasoned podcasters that I could, you know, turn to and ask for advice. And wow. I I'm, I thank the Lord every day that I invested in that because wow. I'm going to share this funny story with you, Kat. So when yeah. I first started like really started my podcast i really wanted to name it the stripper and my tagline was <laughs> to strip your limiting beliefs away and so i i hired yeah. someone to create the graphic have like literally a strip a silhouette of a stripper with a whip and have like the stripper yeah and so i i posted it on the on the group and yeah. i was like oh so this is gonna be my new podcast it's called the stripper Strip oh and God. it's gonna you know the tagline is to strip your limiting beliefs away yeah and you know i thought it was very clever and i thought i was the smartest person in the world and everyone turned me down <laughs> i was like you're gonna get the wrong idea it's not gonna fly well and yeah. and so a part of my comments actually you know went down because i'm like if i can't yeah. even get the name right how am i gonna get the show right right yeah yeah and uh if, if it wasn't for a help you know, from help from my friend to help get me clear I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here today talking about it so yeah. um i'm glad that i changed it and when yeah. i changed it to the tale of self-confidence everyone loved it they're like oh, i'm I gonna tune it. into your show oh my god i love it this is great yeah. this is amazing yeah. and so wow. um sometimes you gotta make a lot of mistakes to get it right <laughs> so are you kidding me girl we have to make mistakes <laughs> yeah and yeah. i know in asian culture like we always oh. have to be this perfect person never make any mistakes never make any noise and that yeah. kills us right yeah. not only does it kill us we feel like we're trapped in our own bodies you know mm -hmm. we go through then we start going through all these mental health issues and then mental health yeah. is such a huge taboo in asian culture that if we say something we're considered crazy and it's yeah. either they avoid us or pu they put us in a mental health institute exactly. and it, it goes as crazy as that and that's why sometimes yeah. i like watching korean dramas because mm -hmm the situations they depict happens in real life, right? Yeah. It's so relatable, right? Yeah. Uh, when kids have to like, uh, when, when parents like, you know, compare their kids, like who's the best here, who's the best there, trying to get them to the biggest, like most prestigious colleges and mm -hmm. pressuring them to always be that perfect student or perfect daughter or perfect wife. And yeah. that really kills us, right? Yeah. Especially with our upbringing. Like, yeah. We've been told to never make any noise, stay in the background and mm -hmm. do as you're told, put your head exactly. down. And if something bad happens, you don't talk about it. You just let it go. Yeah. But look how many times we'd let it go and look what our current situation is now. Asian right. women are almost two and a half times targeted more in, an, yeah. in a hate crime than men. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because they think we're the quiet and submissive and obedient person that's not going to say anything. Yeah. And this is our silence is literally killing us. And this is wow. why I am so passionate about elevating Asian women's voices, because first mm -hmm. of all, we're not one thing. We all don't come from China. We're yeah. all not quiet and submissive and obedient. None yeah. of us are right. Yeah. We're strong. We're resilient. We're brave. We're courageous. We're extraordinary. We're movers mm -hmm. and shakers, but nobody's talking about it. Yeah. So that's why it's time for us to elevate our voices. <laughs> I want to say, but I'm like, that's probably not good for the audio. And I'm so excited. I'm getting chills um, and goosies as I'm, as I'm listening to you talk. And, oh, you just, you covered so much there. Um, let's, let's dial back a little bit because I want to touch every single point here because it's really important. But I want to talk about um, as Asian women, like what, what's with, like, have you ever been in a situation where you did not speak up? Um, you know, like, time. like what, what was going on for you inside of your mind? For me, I just thought anything I would say was stupid and it didn't make mm -hmm. sense. And that who am I to go up there and speak out? Even as simple yeah. as like raising your hand in school, right? We're all afraid to raise our hand and give the wrong answer because all the other kids are going to laugh at us, right? Yeah. Yeah. But people don't realize those little moments in our life or in our childhood also stems yeah. into our adulthood. Yeah. So one thing that happened to me when I was living in the Philippines was I failed kindergarten for coloring outside the lines. Oh. Right. I, I couldn't get past this one photo. I just couldn't color within the lines. It gave me a new Pay, pay, same exact photo, but new. Uh -huh. And it, even when I colored, it was still, it wow. just, I just couldn't get past through it. And I had to like move to another school and like redo kindergarten all over again. And so yeah. for the longest time, I thought I was always a huge failure. Right. And then I always saw failure as this negative thing or like the end of all ends. And I was never good enough. Mm -hmm. And as Asian women, we never feel like we're good enough. We always yeah. feel like we're not worthy. We're not good, yeah. good enough. We can't go out, go out there and do amazing things. Yeah. But there's so many Asian women out there doing such amazing things that nobody talks about. You know, right. I mean, Pat, your story alone is phenomenal. And I tell people about your story because oh. it's like, I did not know you went through all that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, but it, you know, I, I think you're, what you're saying is like, um, there's also cultural reasons behind this too. Um, in Korea, for example, because our culture is based on hierarchy. In fact, like hierarchy is embedded in our language. So you will always ask someone like what your age is because you don't, in Korean, you can't, you don't know how to speak to them until you know where you're, where you are in that hierarchy. And you never speak out against anyone who's older than you. You never embarrass them. You never tell them they're wrong. And particularly in school in Korea, you never, ever question your teacher because it is the most rudest thing you can ever do. And it's so different from Western culture where if you do question your teacher, if you do become independent and raise your voice, um, stand up for yourself, then that's actually valued here in the Western culture, right? But in many Asian cultures and particularly in Korean culture, you never do that. And corporal punishment was still exists, I think, in, in several schools. I think only recently did they start to remove like corporal corporal punishment where they would hit the students oh, if yeah. they misbehaved. Yeah. Um, but there's, you know, I just want people who are listening to this to understand that um, you know, it's just it's not just Asian people who are shy and have self-confidence issues and don't know how to speak up. This is like tied into our ancestry, it's tied into our culture back home from our motherland, and it, it goes much deeper, right? Yeah. So um tell us like what happens when like you you've been you've been invited to in, be interviewed on several media channels recently because of the age, the um, rise in Asian hate crimes. Um, what do you, what do you see? Like what happens when we don't speak up? Like what, and when we're not um, portrayed in media, we're not represented in media. Oh my God. So many things happen, right? First mm -hmm. of all, because we're not portrayed in media and all these things are recently just, you know, being reported right mm -hmm. after the Atlanta shooting. A lot yeah. of them think that yeah. racism does just, just happen now, now, but it's been happening forever. forever. Yeah. That's why it's, why it's so important for schools, schools to teach, you know, you know Asian American, American, American history and, and how we came here since like, like the late 1500s, 1500s right? right? Or talk about things like the Chinese Exclusion Act or, yeah. you know, uh, hiring Asian men for half the wages to build the railroads or also... Um, Always, you know, being you, we're, we're just being used, right? And then we get thrown out at the minute the job's done, right? Uh, even, even, you know, society fetish, fetishizing, I never say that word right, so I apologize, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Fetishizing Asian women stems yeah. from Western culture, right? From the Chinese exclusion app, because mm -hmm. they're like, Asian women are dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't want us to come in because they thought we were a danger to the white man. So wow. all these crazy things, right? Because America mm -hmm. at that time, or, you know, Western culture or European culture wanted to look good. But now mm -hmm. all these things are coming out and they're like, you, you you're just you just made yourself look bad by hiding yeah. all these things right yeah. and so that's why it's so important for us to speak up because then we become a target we become an easy target right yeah we become yeah. a target for sexual harassment racism mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. you know we get stepped on mm -hmm. and sometimes literally now with what's been going on which is very unfortunate yeah and this is why it's so important for us to speak up and i understand that it's not always easy it's hard right because mm -hmm. sometimes there's, there's a lot of risk tied to it, but yeah. if we don't start somewhere, it's just going to get worse mm -hmm. right now. Our silence is killing us. Right. Yeah. And so that's why it's so important to speak up, even if it's scary. Right. I like, I was just telling someone that I got invited to talk about the stop Asian hate movement in a huge channel in China. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was an English speaking show. Of course I can't speak Chinese. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I saw how many followers there were on Facebook, I almost wanted to puke, like, oh. like puke, because first of all, they had over 115 million followers on Facebook. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to go on live television talking about stop Asian hate in front of all of these people. Yeah. Um, it was scary. Of course, it was scary. I was there and it was, like, it was still virtual. But like when I was there, I was like, my hands were really cold. Yeah. I fumbled when I was talking. I yeah. almost blanked out when, yeah. when the host asked me a question. Mm -hmm. And so people sometimes think like, oh, you're so confident. Actually, I'm not. <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. I just push myself so yeah. that I can get that confidence because at the end of it, you're like, well, I didn't die. I'm still standing. And it wasn't as yeah. bad as I thought. And if I made a fool in front of China, like, yeah. you know, there's nothing like that's if that's the worst that could happen, yeah. I can move on to the next thing. Right. right? And right. of course, you know, we're always our own worst critic. Sometimes it's not as bad as it seems, yeah. but 
uh, being able to push through those things really helps us build confidence and realizes what we're capable of. So, mm -hmm. you know, in general, men are way more confident than women. That's mm -hmm. just a given fact, right? Mm -hmm. As women, we are so capable, but because of how we perceive ourselves really stops us from going out and doing the things that we want. And yeah. because of that, there's a huge confidence gap. Like let's say me, me and another man were applying for the same job or same mm -hmm. uh, promotion. Mm -hmm. I would over prepare to a T, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we're women, we're naturally going to over prepare, mm -hmm. but something still kind of holds us back, right? We're thinking, am I really enough for this? Like, am I really good yeah. for this position? While a man who's maybe like, 50% ready, he's going to go for it regardless of what happens. And most of the time, when they're talking, half the times they don't even know what they're doing. They're just making sure they get the deal and figure it out along the way. And so yeah. um, I, that's probably something most people don't talk about. And I like to talk yeah. about this because it applies to us, right? Like women were so capable. And just because we don't have to figure it all, it's not a bad thing, right? We can always figure things out along mm -hmm. the way. And that's what helps, helps us also build confidence. Sometimes when we over prepare, it actually paralyzes us right from yeah. not taking action and most women loses has has low self-esteem due mm -hmm. to inaction because they're overthinking about everything yeah, yeah yeah i heard this statistic from marianne williamson once and and i'm probably going to butcher the statistic i probably shouldn't even <laughs> say it but it was something along the lines of um women only speak up and talk up talk about things that they are sure about if they're like 80 percent above sure about it yeah then they will talk about it but men it was like 50 percent or less yeah <laughs> like i almost want to say 20 or 30 percent like if they it's feel like, like they know something 20 to 30 percent and with certainty they yeah. speak out about it where other whereas women like we just have to make sure over prepare and all of that yeah for sure so what do you think is, um, what are the steps that we do need to take in order for our voices to be heard more? There's, of course, there's our personal, uh, you know, journey of self-confidence and stepping up more and, and talking more about our, our stories. Um, and outside of that, what, what things can we do to get these voices heard more? For sure. I think one of the most important things is being able to ask for help, seek help. And I know in Asian culture, you know, it's, it's, it's a bad if we go out there and ask for help, right? It's considered a handout. And for me, that's something that I struggled with for the longest time, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I was always told, don't ask for help, never ask for anything. We don't yeah. need people's help. But honestly, asking for help is really what jump starts or makes, you know, building your confidence faster, or even building your business faster, mm -hmm. because you're not doing this alone. And sometimes when you do things alone, we feel like we're the only ones doing it. And it, yeah. it, it actually hinders us, right? Then we stop mm -hmm. taking action, then we start, you know, wallowing in our own sorrows, things like that. Or maybe yeah. that's what I did. But um, <laughs> asking for help, right? Ask for help. Like if you yeah if you can't do this alone, it's okay, right? Because yeah. none of us can really do this alone. This is why I created the podcast, right? Yeah. When I realized no one was talking about it, I'm like, is there something wrong with me? Like, am I the only crazy person going through all these issues? But yeah. there's a lot of women going through it. It's just nobody wants to talk about it because they don't want to ask for help because of the mm -hmm. upbringing, because we've mm -hmm. always been told to put our head down. And yeah. so I realized like I'm walking into this new territory and mm -hmm. I'll just do it, right? And mm -hmm. there were so many women who felt the same way that I felt, or even some of the women I've interviewed, they're like, I wish I had this when I was younger. And that's yeah. the only reason why I created it, because I wish I had it when I was younger. Sometimes yeah. we do things because we we crave for something during our childhood, right? Mm -hmm. Like representation mm -hmm. or support system. So having mm -hmm. a support system is very important. I think mm -hmm. that's what really helps you kind of jumpstart building your confidence, right? Yeah. Um, for me, like one example was doing video. Mm -hmm. uh, I really did not want to do video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First time I did my video was so bad. Like it took me two hours to do a two minute video. Yeah. And uh, it was really nerve wracking. It was like the worst thing I like I had to conquer at that time. Yeah. Right. It was just like this heavy feeling. And I would look at my phone and this this phone kept like getting bigger, you know, mm -hmm. and you're scared of it just looks bigger than it usually does. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually part of this women's group at the time. And I realized that the other women in the group were just as scared as I am. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, if they can do that and I know what they're going through because I'm going through the same thing, I should be able mm -hmm. to do this. And that really helped me get very comfortable with video. Like now I don't really care, but back then it was like the biggest fear that I had to tackle at the time. Mm -hmm. So that's one huge lesson. Like have a support system, you know, yeah. take, take baby steps. You don't have to make big leaps to build confidence, right? Yeah. A lot of people feel like if they don't hit that big goal 
mm-hmm. they feel defeated and they're not going to do it again. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if you were to hit 80% of it, I think that's still pretty good. <laughs> That's right. excellent. I know we, we live in a culture where everything is like supersized and you have to make your goal unattainable. And if you attain yeah. your goal, then your goal wasn't big enough, which yeah. really kind of just sets you up for more failure because you're just not, you're constantly not reaching your goal. I think we should like, um, just like chill out a little bit with all the big, massive goals and doing, doing, yeah. doing, doing. Yeah. Um, like not, I'm not saying like big goals are a bad thing. Right. But exactly have small goals to attain yeah. to help you build that confidence. Like one yeah. thing I celebrated that I was really happy was trying to figure out how to do a zoom background for, cause for the longest time I had no clue what to do. Yeah. And when I, like at one point the zoom background was on my shirt instead of the actual background. I'm like, Oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh so, yeah. Well, I love what you're saying here because I think it applies not just to Asian women, but women in general. And I think yeah. this is what we're really moving into in this new era of um it's almost like post covid post pandemic post trump world um you know where prior that it was all about toxic masculinity doing things on your own being individualistic and independent and we are really moving away from that and moving towards this collective way of being where we've really got to learn how to ask each other for help and support because the old way of being doing it by yourself not only doesn't work but it's destructive to yeah. um, our culture and our environment, because you're really only thinking about yourself and how you can not just um, get things for yourself, but like doing things on yourself. It's not mentally and emotionally healthy by any means. And I really believe we are moving into um, a time and a space where we, we're, we're learning how to lean on each other and we don't have to have all the answers. In fact, we're not, we were never meant to have <laughs> all those answers. And do you know what's really cool, Sheena, is that I really see um, that we are kind of moving into this way of being that would probably can be defined as like Asian values, like collective culture, you know, thinking about one another instead of yourself first. I see that the Western culture is really (laughs) ready or not. It really needs to start to embrace those values. Yeah, for sure. And especially with the pandemic, right? Like, you know, the, the simple act of wearing a mask, right? You're not just doing yeah. it for yourself. You're doing it for others, right? right. 10 minutes out of your time isn't going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny to watch the Western world, especially here in America. Just oh. like, dude, dude. <laughs> I know. Even even here, yeah, every yeah. every weekend downtown Toronto, there's an anti-mask, anti-mask lockdown. It's just, it's so crazy. And I'm like, yeah. Really, like it's not the end of the world. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, and it doesn't have to be a thing. Like, just just wear a mask. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's like I know I, that, that could be a whole other know, conversation. Another episode, probably another just another show altogether. Yeah. Um, I want to know, um, from your perspective, like you have interviewed hundreds of Asian women now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What have you learned? Like, what do you feel like is the common theme or like the through line? Well, I think. A lot of them is, you know, how, how they felt about themselves, not being, you know, not feeling worthy, not feeling good enough, uh, always pleasing others, not being able to make a decision. And um, those are some of the commonalities that we share, right? Um, for for Asian women who are from mixed race, um, theirs is different. Theirs is more like, I don't belong in either groups. I'm not Asian enough and I'm not the other culture enough, right? And so they there's no, so they always feel like, they don't belong anywhere. And that's, there's a huge disconnect to it. Yeah, And um, I, it's very important to talk about that, right? Because there's a yeah. lot of, you know, mixed race Asians out there, right? Some have two, three different cultures, you know, mixed in. I yeah. mean, I have a nephew who's also a mm-hmm. mixed race person, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I try to incorporate both cultures into, yeah. into, his, into, his, into his, you know, daily life or things like that, whether it's food or books, whatever, words, mm-hmm. as much as I can, I want him to realize, you know, he knows doesn't belong to one culture he belongs mm-hmm. to two cultures mm-hmm. and it's really important because these are things that nobody talks about yeah um, and also being able to see how women are able to overcome some of the worst things in their life like mm-hmm. i mean cat i mean your story alone is a great example right i mean you went through so much and i'm like why aren't why isn't your story a movie <laughs> honestly <laughs> 
um, like like your story. I I always share your story to on interviews, mm. right? Saying you know she went from like jail and drugs and all this to like being this amazing self confidence oh. coach, being able to be featured on John Legend's video, being able to advise for Dwayne Johnson's reality show. I mean, it, it just yeah. it's a clear example that your past does not have to be your future. Yeah, and yeah. and it's so important to see these stories, right? Because it, we can relate to them, right? There's someone out there who might be going through similar situations you're going through and say, well, if she was able to be in a John Legend video, <laughs> I, I think I could do that too, right? Because representation is important. Uh, there's even reports saying that if women see more women in leadership roles or CEO roles, there's an 86% chance that they might do their own thing or follow suit. And so that's why it's so important because some people do have to see it before they believe it, right? There's yep. others who believe it before they see it, but some people need need to see it. So that's yeah. why representation is very important, especially for, you know, growing up as an Asian woman, like we just feel like we're never talked about. We just feel like we're always yeah. in the background, even till this day. I, I even talk to women, you know, like women who in South Asian cultures, they feel like telling me that it, family parties, they can't even drink in front of their family members. <laughs> like they have to go in the bathroom and like, pr like drink in the bathroom. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's 2021. So yeah, wow. um, we go through a lot. Right. Yeah. And then especially now with the pandemic, I mean, everyone's mental health has been, you know, heightened, right? Mm -hmm. There are issues of heightened, but even more so when you have the pandemic and Asian hate crimes, yeah, uh, happening at the same time. Now our mental health is uh, twice as bad now because of that. And there've been reports saying women feel it more than men. Yeah. 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 It was horrible. It's horrible, horrible to see, to see um, um, the violence that's being inflicted on our Asian brothers and sisters and our elders. Too. The elders. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what kills the most, right? Because yeah. um, they didn't do anything. You know? no. They've already been through so much trauma and now they're going through the same trauma again. Yeah. And, you know, there's reports of how many crimes were reported, but mm -hmm. nobody knows how many crimes are unreported, right? Because we still, yeah. because of our upbringing, we still don't want to make any noise. We don't want to make any yep. trouble, even though it's not our fault. Yep. And then, yes, elderly are, easy, are also an easy target because of a language barrier. Is that right? All of them can speak English. And yeah. now what's even happening now is that a lot of people in the Latinx community are getting mistaken as Asians. So then they're being targeted oh. for that reason. So like God. last month, I read how a 70 year old Mexican woman got beaten up because they thought she was Asian. Like no, no old person should have to go through that regardless of any culture, right? It's, oh it's just uncalled for. And anyone who beats up an old person are cowards. That's it. They're, they're all cowards. Yeah. yeah. That's just heartbreaking. And to, to be honest, um, and I have a, you know, a personal question for you is I, I have a hard time watching and staying, um, and staying on top of the news around this because it's so, it triggers too much inside of me and it, it it's not healthy for me. Yeah. So how do you, how do you deal with it? How do you stay on top of the news? And, you know, like if I saw and heard about that story, I mean, and I've heard many stories already, but I, I just break down and I can't even deal with it. So yeah. I mean, I, I don't go looking for it. I mean, I do follow certain sources like Next Shark to yeah. see what's going on. So when mm -hmm. I see it, that's when I talk about it. But other than that, like if someone doesn't tell me if I don't see it mm -hmm. on on the news or social media, I wouldn't know. I don't go looking for it. I know mm -hmm. it exists. And just because I'm not looking for it doesn't mean that I don't want to know about it. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. I want to focus on a solution versus the problem. Like how can we encourage more women to speak up? How yeah. can we help them? gain more confidence, gain, gain more, um, you know, the, be able to do things like make a decision for themselves or go with their intuition, because these are some of the things that we deal with or uh, help them see their worth or do simple things as like self-promotion, because as women, it's not very ladylike to, you know, promote ourselves, but yeah. you know, it's, it's all crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what would you say is like, what would you love to see um, for Asian women as we're moving into this new era and we're, you know, we're in the midst of this rise in Asian hate crime? Like, What's your vision for, for yourself and even for like the work that you're doing? Like, what's your vision? For me, it's really just being able to help the younger generation see what's mm -hmm. possible. Like they don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer or accountant or whatever their parents yeah. tell them to. I want them to be able to make a decision for themselves and do things for their own and be able to see that 
I could be this, I could be mm-hmm. that. I, like sky is the limit, right? Yeah. Um, be, if they want to be in a leadership role, they can be, right? Because now we do have women in leadership roles or, yeah. you know, being able to open doors to place to industries that were very male dominated, right? Yeah. Like sports, politics, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. even entertainment. I mean, yeah. the Oscars, we have three Asian women who won an Oscar, yeah. which is amazing, so awesome. right? Yeah. Um, even a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to two high school students who just, who decided to start their own like activist group, bringing mm-hmm. awareness about stop Asian hate here in Toronto. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is great because back then if I tried to start that, I don't know if there was anyone I could turn to. Yeah. So, you know, just being there for them and just getting messages saying like, you know, I'm so grateful that you did this. I'm so grateful that you created this, you know, I, yeah. this is the type of stuff I want my daughter, like to instill in my daughter, the type of mindset, yeah. you know, we've been, we've been doing so many great things. Nobody talks about it. Um, you know, just being able to celebrate the achievements and keep showing what's possible. I know May is Asian heritage month, but Mm -hmm. of course that work doesn't stop at this month. You know, we have to celebrate every day. We have to do the work every single day to create that change. And Mm -hmm. I, I get it. There's so many things that's going on in this world, especially like, uh, in America, you know, with the Stop Asian Hate movement, people are complaining like there's a divide between you mm. know, Asians and Blacks. And yeah. we have to understand like we have to work in solidarity to solve yeah. the problem, right? Yeah. Not fuel it with more hate. And, yeah. um, I agree. you know, even after the whole Atlanta shootings, like so many people came up to me and told me, you know, we're all in solidarity together. We're going to work through this together. Mm. I mean, uh, one yeah. of the books I'm in is called, you know, Women of Color Who Boss Up, like, you know, yeah highlighting women of color from around the world, uh, you know, creating diversity and inclusion and showing that solidarity. It's, it's, yeah. it's a huge message. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe that it, it can work when we can work together. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you 100%. Um, particularly like, you know, I advocate so much for healing the black and Asian divide. Um, and it's, it's really hard work. I, and, you know, what's been beautiful is I've been seeing a lot of, um, people from these different various, um, you know, uh, communities of color coming together. And at the same time, I, I see the divide as well. So it's it's really encouraging and hopeful, but it's also hurtful at yeah. the same time. I think I'm, I think, I hate to say it, but it's like getting, uh, receiving racism from the white community is almost a given, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. Like a- uh, I mean, <laughs> it's what the country was built on. So it's almost like I can remove myself from that. But then when I when I hear it from other communities of color, um, that hurts me um, more for some reason. Yeah. And there was a recent uh, Red Table Talk. And I know you watched oh, it. Oh, I watched it. Yeah, yeah I, I loved it. it. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, uh, Gam, who is um, the Willow Smith's grandmother, yeah. Jada Pickens Smith's mother, she was sharing her, her, her perspective on Asian people. Yeah. And I have to tell you, it really hurt. And it's it, like afterwards, I, I, t- I talked about it in another interview I did and I started crying. And I was like, God, I didn't know I was so emotional about this, but she basically, you know, thought like, why should I care about what's happening to Asian people right now? And this is like, she was really just voicing her opinion yeah. and her truth, you know, which is good. Um, but she said, why should I care? Because we've been hurting and they haven't been, you know, supporting us. And when I walk into an Asian owned store, they just give me the side eye and they, and, you know, they, they judge me and they follow me around. She's like, why should I care? And then she was like saying, you know, how, how why, how are you going to come to my country? How are you going to come to my country and come into my community and take over the store and, you know, and then also um, be racist to me at the same time? And it was like, oh, that just like it really hurt so much to hear that. And of course, the show was really great because Lisa Ling was on and they were able to have a conversation around that. But what's hurtful is that what Gam was saying, I know, represents so many yeah. other um, Black Americans' points of view on Asians. Yeah, and it's also a lot of miscommunication and misunderstanding, oh, and it yeah. stems, and it still stems from the same thing, right? Like, yeah. there's a superior race out there, yes. and so all everyone else who's of color gets driven to different areas, and it feels like, oh, we're yeah. the ones taking over their area. Really, no, we just had nowhere else to go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're all being pushed into one, you know, one one area, <laughs> basically, with yeah. regulating, um, um, regulations and everything. And so 
I, I, I think you are so right about what you're doing. And, um, you know, even when I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying today and, you know, my personal journey around this, this rise in Asian hate crime and my advocacy, um, around healing the black and Asian divide. Sometimes, Sheena, I'm so exhausted. It is. And, it's not, yeah. It's exhausting sometimes. Right. Cause you're like, yeah. when, is this, when will, when will we ever come to a point where everyone just gets along? Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and I, I hear it from everybody. Like, why should we care about doing this? Oh, well, yeah. you know, this is always happening. And I'm like, I'm not stupid. I'm not ignorant. I know it happens. Yeah. But, you know, fueling hate with more hate isn't the answer. It's this not. is why solidarity is so important. This is why we have to work together to end these problems mm -hmm. because it's better when we do it together than trying to fight each other. Right. Yeah. And, and why it's so important that we continue sharing our stories. I think you're so right. When, when we don't speak, we kill it. Like staying silent really. Yeah literally kills us um, because as Asians, it's, it, we are not used to at all to share our stories and our pains and our yeah. suffering. We just never do that. My mom won't do that in public. She'll do it to me. <laughs> like, mom, you need it. Like you should see a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist. She's like, yeah. why would I do that? Um, because yeah. we're a hot mess. <laughs> yeah. And, but, and but I think people won't. don't forget, people don't forget, uh, don't realize too, like, uh, in history and time, like there was a lot of black and Asian like solidarity too. It's just yeah. nobody talks about it. Like last That's night, funny. I was watching a um, a documentary on Vincent Chin's murder, right? Yeah. And also, the black and Asian community came together to speak up yeah. for the justice that Vincent Chin went right because mm -hmm. his killers were basically got only had to pay three thousand dollars, right? Uh -huh. To for the murder. Mm -hmm. um, so just little things like that. Even if we talk about things like, like there's photos on it, there's things like, yeah. you know, as early as the 1800s where, you know, we stood up for each other and worked together. And so I think yeah. when we can bring more of that up, it yeah. can really help because some of the comments I hear is like, well, you don't, we don't advocate for us. Why should we advocate for you? Yeah. It's like, actually we've been doing this to each other for a long time. It's just, nobody yeah. talks about it. Exactly. Um, so it's so, it's so important. And this is why it's so important for us to speak up because then so much misunderstanding comes, so right? Much. Um, so some much. people don't realize we go through racism. People are like, I yeah. don't think Asian people go through racism. And it's like, why are they crying about it now? Like, it, this yeah. is the first time it's ever happened to you. It's like, no, it's been a while. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Even here, they're like, there's no racism in Canada. I'm like, mm -hmm. are you blind? Like, of course yeah. there's racism. It's just nobody talks about it. And yeah. even in Canada, we go through a lot of polite racism, right? Like, yeah. I was reading an article where this, like, lady went up to two Chinese guys in the bus and they're like, oh, are you the one with the Chinese virus like God. that's how it is or like my friend got a job um, at a law firm and uh, you know she's being introduced to all her co-workers and one of the ladies she, uh, that one of the ladies was like oh you really look like Kathy and the only reason why she said that is because they're both Asian. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but they look nothing. It's like saying me and you look alike, but that yeah. like we look nothing alike, right? It's just because yeah. we're both Asian and that's how we're always lumped as, you know, right. we all come from China. We're mm -hmm. all uncivilized and now we're the carriers of this virus. So yeah. this is why every single person gets targeted because yeah. of these uh, ignorant, you know, uh, things, especially with Trump saying all those, you know, oh, those right. really crazy terms. It makes it yeah. even worse. Oh yeah. It, it's, it's just, it's, I can't even with that whole thing. Um, well, I just, okay. What is it? What's one thing that you, what one message do you want to share with our fellow Asian American sisters and brothers and even everyone who else is listening? Because this is, this applies to everyone. Yeah. I think it's just, you know, if you want to do something to really create the change, just go ahead and do it. Just realize, you know, one person can make a difference and oh. you don't have to make big steps. Just take it one step at a time. Yeah. Rome wasn't built in a day, so don't expect yourself to be yeah. built in one day. So, yeah. uh, and it's all those small actionable daily steps that really yield the big results. So yeah. take it step yeah. by step, celebrate every success, no matter how big or small it is and surround yourself with like-minded people. I love it. One person can make a difference. I love it so much. Okay, Sheena, tell us um, how our viewers can connect with you. Tell us about your upcoming book project um, and how, how where they where can they find you? Yeah, for sure. So um, they can check out my website, SheenaYapchan.com or my podcast website, the Tao of self We do have, I do have two books out. Uh, one's called Asian women who boss up. You can pre-order a signed copy in either websites. And part of the proceeds will go to nonprofit organizations that are combating anti-Asian hate. Uh, we also recently got 
another book launch called International Women of Color Who Boss Up. You can check that out on Amazon. And both books are great. Honestly, both books are great because, you know, these are stories that sometimes you're like, you just, your jaw just drops, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause you're like, I can't believe this stuff happened. And this is real life. Um, yeah. Like, you know, one woman was diagnosed with breast cancer and got sued by the FTC all at the same time. How do you get out of a situation like that? Wow. Or another woman went through 12 near death experiences. I was like, you know, 50 cent can't keep saying he got shot nine times. Cause there's one woman who's had 12 near death experience. And one wow. of them got shot four times or something like, like something really crazy. And I was like, how is she still like, out there doing her thing, smiling, being positive after going through traumatic experiences like yeah. that. And yeah. so this is why stories like these are important mm -hmm. because, you know, we have to show, like, speak our truth, show our mess, yeah. right? Sometimes yeah. our mess is our message. Like I've right. been through where you've been through and even worse, and I'm able to overcome it. And I know yeah. you can too. Yeah. I love it. Um, Sheena, yeah. I just want to thank you so much for being that voice. You are so inspiring and you are giving a platform for so many of us, including myself. Um, the podcast is amazing. And by the way, I have received so many people, um, like messages and people following me because of that, of that, um, episode that we did together. Number 805, you guys go. To <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. Honestly, I always talk about it. And <laughs> so oh. that could be one other reason why too. Cause they're always like, what are some stories that you've had interviewed? I'm like, Oh, there's one girl I know. She's like, she was a drug dealer. She went to jail. She went through all this. And now look, she, she was in a John Legend video. And oh. so, because I wanted to show people like, you know, whatever past you have is your yeah. past, right? Yeah. But exactly. you can change your present and future at any given moment when you choose yeah. to. And yeah. that's so important, especially going from like, you know, from one thing to the opposite. Like it's yeah. possible. It's and, totally possible. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, I always say your mess is your message, right? Like people are inspired by you because of the things you went through and how you're able to overcome it. And now how you're helping other women do 